Hi, I am Dr. Karen Hardy, a pediatric pulmonary specialist with Stanford Children's Health. Hearing that your child has asthma can be overwhelming, but if it's correctly managed, most kids with asthma can live healthy lives full of running and sports and play. Here are five tips for better asthma management. First tip, know your triggers. Triggers are the specific things that cause asthma flares or events. Identifying your triggers can help you prevent asthma events or recognize them quickly. Common triggers include infection. For most children, this is the number one reason that their asthma gets out of control. Exercise, especially if asthma is not already well controlled, can be a major trigger as well. Smoke of any type, whether that be a fireplace in your home or a campfire when you're making your s'mores or fires in the hills of California. Perfumes and scents in lotions, in soaps, in makeup. Cleaning products can also trigger your child. Vacuuming can trigger your child. And finally, allergens. There can be indoor allergens, which can include all the furry pets, dogs and cats and bunny rabbits and guinea pigs. Notably, lizards, fish, those are okay for asthma patients. Dust mites, which are a microscopic insect that eats dead human skin and lives in your bed on your upholstery, in your carpets, can be a major indoor trigger. Cockroaches and other pests and vermin can be triggers. Outdoor allergens include molds and pollens from trees and flowers and grasses. All of these things can be stirred up by wind and weather, which could also trigger you. Tip number two, develop a written action plan. It's very scary for you when your child can't breathe. Children may not always follow a predictable pattern, especially in kids who have been mild, who haven't been admitted or hospitalized. A severe event can still happen to that child and with little warning. So it's better for you to be prepared to have a written action plan that takes the guesswork out of what to do if this happens. It is most helpful to use a traffic light pattern, green when there are no symptoms, yellow for the onset of colds, for coughing and wheezing, or when your known triggers are present or red when medications are not working well and your child has increased trouble breathing. This might include coughing, overt wheezing, retractions when the skin is sucking against the bones of the chest and neck, or nasal flaring, fast breathing, increased effort to breathe. As asthma worsens, kids can even have trouble walking and talking. 911 is your last resort when your child is in severe distress or his or her skin color is becoming dusky or blue. Tip number three, learn the details of proper device use. Many devices are used to deliver medications to the lung. It is critically important to know how to use your device correctly. Meter dose inhalers, this type of device, are commonly used and must always be used with a holding chamber or a spacer. This happens to be a large spacer. Babies and young children use a face mask that fits over their nose and mouth while older children who know how to breathe can use a mouthpiece. Teaching this skill is very important and making a fun game of it can help. Dry powder inhalers, DPIs, require different skills. Be sure you have your provider teach you how to correctly use the device in a hands-on session with the actual device you will have at home. Always bring your devices to every visit. Show the team how you are using them. Kids' skills often slip and need correcting over time. Tip number four, identify empty inhalers. Make sure your provider orders an inhaler with a counter. This is a counter. You wanna know exactly how many puffs are left in your device. Decide how much time you need to make a refill and be sure you build in enough time so you never run out of medicine. If the counter says 14 and you are taking a puff twice a day, that's gonna give you a week in order to get your new medication. So decide, what number do you wanna see on this counter when you're gonna call the pharmacy? Remember that each inhaler will need to be primed before you use it if it has not been used for weeks. To prime an inhaler, you will be puffing the medication into the air a few times before using the medication on your child. Every inhaler has printed information about exactly how to prime that device. Tip number five, communicate effectively with your provider. You, your child, and your provider form a team 
It is vitally important that you talk regularly. The provider needs to carefully explain what is wrong and the treatment plan, giving you the skills you'll need to manage your child's asthma and providing a written action plan. You need to be sure you understand what is wrong and what you can do about it. Don't be afraid to ask your provider all the questions you have. If your provider suggests changes in the home environment, make them promptly. Community resources may be available to help you make these changes. Ask your provider. Home visits are provided by some insurance companies and local community sources. These can help you spot improvements that may help keep your child healthier in the home. When available, you can also email your provider and access your child's test results online. I hope you've enjoyed these five tips for asthma. All of these can help keep your child healthier, keep your child in school, sleeping through the night, out of the emergency room, and active on the playground, doing sports, and having fun being a child.